Did you know that tithing or giving 10% of your income is not really mentioned in the New Testament? This isn't something a lot of pastors really want you to know, but it is not really mentioned. Why is that? It's not because it's not important. It's not because Jesus did away with it. And it's not because God doesn't want you to give anymore. It's because Jesus came to fulfill the law. See, tithing was a rule, a regulation. It was a law in Jewish culture. And God commanded that we bring back 10% or a tithe back to him as a way to declare our trust and dependency on him. But it, see, it became a religious duty, something people just had to do and were forced to do meticulously. When Jesus comes on the scene in the New Testament, he calls us to live at an even higher standard, not just fulfilling a religious duty, but actually having a heart change. Think about it like this. The law says, don't murder. But Jesus comes on the scene and says, I tell you that if you have even hate in your heart for your brother, it's as if you have killed him. The law also says, don't commit adultery, meaning one married man and woman in a sexual relationship. But Jesus says, if you even look at a woman lustfully, it's as if you've already had that affair. Why? Because God doesn't really care about us fulfilling our religious duty. He cares about our hearts. That's why 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving, all because God loves hilarious generosity. You can always tell the condition of your heart by your generosity. Your love for God and people are demonstrated by your actions, and one of those actions is your generosity. God loved the world, so he just spoke to it. He encouraged it. He kept doing his thing. He, brought a new, he bought a new car for himself. No, no, no. He loved the world so much, so he gave. So what does God really want from you? God doesn't want or need your money. God doesn't want you to follow the rules or give out of obligation. God wants your heart. He wants you. So here are three ways that we can live this out and be generous the way God intended us to be. Number one, understand that we are stewards of everything and owners of nothing. You see, generosity is all about the heart. Are you willing to lay it down? Willing to give it to someone else who may need it more? How are you stewarding your time, your relationships, and even your kids? As Christ followers, we won't be judged for heaven or hell. You see, we will be held accountable for how well we steward what God allowed us to have here on earth. And it's not just about money, but everything you have. We get a great glimpse at the church that God intended uh, in the book of Acts. It's not a building, it's, it's a community of people living in faith with purpose. In Acts 2.22 and Acts 4.32, it says, they shared whatever they had. Well, what did they have? They had skills, they had energy, they had time, they had money, they had houses, they had wisdom, they had expertise, they had a network, friends and family network, they had family. Some of them were blacksmiths, some of them were doctors, some of them were teachers, some were farmers or fishermen. They shared all that they had as the needs came up in the community. That is church. And here's the result. The result was that the church multiplied and grew. People got saved, miracles happened. Why? Because they realized that they didn't own anything, but they were stewards or managers of everything that God allowed them to have. The Bible says there was no selfishness among them. Imagine that. When it comes to managing what God gives us, one of the things that always challenges me is how well I'm managing my car. Come on, can I be real for a second? I live a fast paced on the go life, so sometimes I don't keep my car as clean as it probably should be. If I really think about it, I hate to admit that God might not be honored by the way I manage my car at times. It always challenges me to do better. Second way we can be generous, create margins so that you are able to. See, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So you need to be intentional. You need to be ready to go. You need to have a plan. Financially, you should probably live on a budget. 70% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. 20% of Americans spend more than they make. 50% of Americans don't even have any savings or an emergency fund. See, if you put yourself on a budget, it's a plan. 
It's uh, maybe a plan to save 10%, a plan to give. Start with 10% is maybe a goal, maybe more, maybe less, but get a plan. Plan what you will spend on food, travel, gas, and toys. See, if you don't have a plan, you can't build in margin. If there is no plan, there's no margin. Then your desires to be generous, the way that you are wired to be generous is just wishful thinking. 1 Corinthians 16, two says this. On the first day of each week, you should each put aside a portion of the money that you have earned. Don't wait until I get there and then try to collect it all at once. What are they doing? They're creating margin. They're planning to be generous. In the same way, think about it. Uh, plan to be generous with your time. Create some time in your calendar to meet with people, to connect with people, to encourage people, and be generous with your time. Dedicate time to encourage people, to pray for people, to connect with people, to love people, to serve people. Plan, create some margin, create some dedicated calendar appointments to do that. Also with Jesus, make sure you calendar and schedule your time with God. Be generous with your skills. How can you share your talents, your expertise, your wisdom, your experience? Take inventory of everything that you have and everything you know to do, and then begin to just share it with others. Third way, start being generous today. One of the many excuses that we often use is, I'll, I'll get to it tomorrow. I'll do it next week. Maybe I'll start in the new year. Well, those aren't really promised to us, if you think about it. So, so how can you take steps today to be generous? Right now, pause. Do you need to text somebody? Do you need to encourage somebody and pray for somebody? Take a moment to do that. You never know who needs that today. How can you share what God has allowed you to learn? Maybe from this video or maybe something else. See, you have something to, that someone else needs. So just start sharing. Maybe financially, you can start doing that today. You can partner with us to make a difference in Georgia, but also in Honduras and Haiti. You could also be a blessing to maybe your neighbors that you know have a need. You could get them a gift, maybe pay for someone's coffee or meal behind you in the drive through Maybe give that waiter an extra generous tip, but just start being generous today. This is what God intended for you and for those who are Christ followers. As we end today, I just wanted to leave you with this verse, Proverbs eleven twenty four. 24. It says this, give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. Now you probably immediately focused on the become more wealthy. Me too. I mean, who doesn't wanna be more wealthy? But as we finish today, let's look at two other words in this scripture, stingy and freely. Stingy really means an unwillingness and freely means without restriction. Again, this is really dealing not with our, our, our actions, but our heart. So let's change the verse to include the definition of these two words. Give without restriction and become more wealthy. Be unwilling to give and lose everything. See, when it's put that way, it really challenges me. I hope it challenges you as well. Am I unwilling to give something? Is there something that is being restricted in my generosity or am I giving freely without restriction? This again has nothing to do with a dollar amount, with hours given or with talents that you shared with the world. It's all about your heart. Because at the end of the day, God doesn't need or want your stuff. The amount you give is up to you. And in proportion to what you do have, God just wants your heart.